For years now, Apple has been offering computers where the base configuration features 8 gigabytes of RAM. And now the base model of the 14-inch MacBook Pro is also equipped with just 8 gigs. And that does seem a little light for a computer with a $1,600 price tag. Spend the same amount on a PC notebook and you'll likely be getting 16 gigs or even 32. And lots of people have pointed this out. And Apple has responded, sort of, with an interesting claim. 8 gigs of memory on a Mac is probably the same as 16 gigs on other systems. Now, before the PC fans and the mathematicians spit out their coffee, it should be said that this isn't actually an official response from Apple. It was a comment made in an interview by Bob Borcher, their vice president of worldwide marketing. He was talking to a machine learning developer and content creator. I'll put a link to the video in the description. It's on a Chinese video sharing website, but the interview segment is in English. But what I want to do in this video is answer two questions. Firstly, is 8 gigabytes of RAM enough? And is 8 gigs on a Mac similar to 16 gigs on Windows? Let's discuss. We'll start with that first question. Is 8 gigabytes enough RAM? Uh, the answer to that is pretty simple. Yes, depending on what you're doing with the computer. Now take this MacBook Air that I've got here for example. It's the 15-inch M2 model with the base spec. So we're talking 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. And when we talk about the SSD here, it's the version with the single NAND flash chip. So this one has the slowest drive in Apple's range. This really is base spec. But I bought this computer for my wife and it's more than enough for her work. It replaced an Intel MacBook Air from 2018, also with 8 gigs. And frankly, there is no comparison. It's night and day when it comes to performance. Now, she regularly uses this computer for web browsing, watching content, doing research, working on study projects, Zoom calls, Microsoft Office, editing photos, email, you know, all the stuff the average user does on a day-to-day -day basis. Is 8 gigabytes enough for her? Absolutely. In fact, I would say the majority of the target market for these machines will rarely be doing anything that an 8 gig Apple Silicon Mac can't handle. But if you want to do more with the machine and you're venturing into heavier creative workloads, you will see benefits from jumping to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So if 8 gigs is fine for general purpose computing, then it does seem reasonable for the base consumer Macs to come with that amount of memory. But when it comes to a $1,600 MacBook Pro with 8 gigs of RAM, not so much. Now true, some folks will buy the 14-inch MacBook Pro for its form factor and its XDR display, but I'd say the target audience for this model is aspiring creative professionals and developers, users who will be venturing into those heavier workloads. And it just seems unnecessarily cheap of Apple not to give it 16 gigs of RAM as standard. Of course, this is all a marketing gimmick around having that price anchor at $1,600, because $1,600 sounds better than $1,800 which is what an M3 16 gig version will actually cost. But what about Bob's argument that eight gigabytes is probably analogous to 16 gigabytes on other systems? Is that true? Yes, but also no. If you're coming from a recent Windows notebook with 16 gigs of RAM, then I think you'll be surprised at what the Mac can do with half the memory. But we need to make sure that we understand clearly here that mathematics and physics can't be cheated. Half the RAM is still half the RAM. What Bob is really referring to here is the optimization advantage that Apple has over the competition. They design the hardware from the silicon up and they develop the software which runs on it. And that allows for very tight optimization that simply isn't possible in the PC market. And Apple takes this further by providing a comprehensive set of developer tools which allows software creators to easily take advantage of these optimizations. Next, they employ techniques such as memory compression and memory swapping, neither of which is new or unique to Apple. Uh, memory compression, let's just explain that. It's a method of taking areas of less used data which has been stored in the memory of the machine and then using compression techniques to reduce the amount of space that's needed to store it. Now this compression and decompression process adds work for the processor, but the M chips have custom accelerators to deal with that. So in the real world, you don't really notice. Memory swapping involves taking that less used data and copying it to the SSD storage. And since SSDs have gotten so fast, this doesn't have a massive impact on general performance. In fact, most of the time, you won't even notice that it's happening. 
Uh, we do need to say that there are some concerns around excessive memory swapping, but I have covered that extensively in other videos, so we won't talk about it further here. Now these two techniques, they can be used independently or in combination to quickly free up memory. And thanks to that very tight optimization between hardware and software, this means that your 8 gigabyte Mac can do more than you would expect from, say, a Windows laptop with 8 gigs. The other key advantage the Mac has is its unified memory architecture. And to understand this, you first need to understand that the M chips are complete systems on chip. The chip inside this computer has a CPU with performance cores and efficiency cores. It's got a GPU for handling graphics. It's got machine learning cores for AI tasks, along with accelerators for all sorts of common tasks like playing back video. Even the controller for the SSD is within the chip, so you have everything on one piece of silicon. And right next to that system on chip is the RAM. It's really fast, and the unified memory architecture means that every part of that system on chip can access the same RAM. Not just the same RAM chips, but the same data stored within those chips. Let's take an example. In a PC, data has to be copied from the system RAM to the graphics memory and then back again. In an Apple Silicon Mac, the graphics processor can address the same memory space as the CPU. No copying. It's more efficient, and it uses less overall memory. There are other examples of this too, but when you combine all of these advantages, it, it is absolutely true that a Mac can do more with less RAM uh, when compared to an equivalent PC. But what you can't do is escape the laws of physics. If you're working with large data sets or huge files, no optimization is ever going to be a substitute for physical RAM. And we have seen in our testing that it's not actually that difficult to find those limits on an 8 gig Mac if you throw some heavier workloads at it. Now, something else that Bob said in the interview, and I, I do agree with him, is that you need to look beyond the specs. You can't really compare numbers between Mac and PC because the architecture and the approach is so different. What you need to do is evaluate the end result. But what I do find slightly amusing is that these arguments that are being put forward by Bob are not new. They're the same things that were being said by many tech reviewers and YouTubers when the M1 Macs were first released. And now it seems some of those same outlets are ridiculing those claims. So what conclusions should you draw? Well, firstly, I have proven in my extensive testing that 8 gigs of RAM is plenty for a general purpose computer. And also that a Mac equipped with 8 gigs can typically do more than a PC with 8 gigs. In fact, for some tasks, an 8 gig Mac does seem to perform on par with a 16 gig PC for some tasks, but 8 gigabytes does not equal 16 gigabytes. Another thing is that any Mac user that wants to do more than basic computing tasks should spec their Mac with at least 16 gigs of RAM. And I've been saying that ever since the launch of M1, because that's what our testing revealed. And finally, a MacBook Pro with 8 gigs of RAM is not really a pro machine at this point in time. Now, fair enough with the old 13-inch model because it was so much cheaper, but at $1,600, no. Not good enough. Apple has tested the boundaries of what they can get away with, and this is a hard stop. It's actually bordering on contempt for their customers, and they need to change that base spec. As consumers, we do tend to make computer buying decisions on specs, numbers that often have little relevance to our actual workflow. It's just we want the bigger numbers. Why? Because the manufacturers want us to want them. It makes us spend more money on a more regular basis. And it's been a thing ever since the PC started taking off in the 90s. But often, key details are missing from those numbers, and almost always, people wind up buying more computer than they actually need or will ever use. I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to hearing your views in the comments. Thank you in advance for those, and of course, for your subs, your shares, your likes, and even your dislikes. I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.